Whoa. Earth Shattering, Switch Pro, and PS5 News. One epic video. Let's go. OB1 plays. Yes, right. What's up? All oh, right. OB1 plays. everybody how are y'all doing we have some huge huge news today in one video but before we get started you already know the vibes give the video a thumbs up if you're not subscribed click subscribe make sure the notification bells are on and let's get to the first news item this is coming from a Bloomberg Bloomberg terminal for those of you that don't know and this is so you know that this information could be very legit concerning switch pro specs launch date all of that's gonna be broken down in this video Bloomberg terminal costs two thousand dollars a month to access why because this is pretty accurate the latest breaking financial information for investors for financial institutions and so they try to be as careful and up to date as possible with their information and so a reddit user who claims he has access to this bloomberg terminal has dropped this information i'm about to give y'all 20 over twenty thousand dollar a year information absolutely free concerning the switch pro this is what they say they reiterate a holiday launch in 2021 the switch pro is coming this year because rumors were like a year ago really the switch pro possibly could have been ready for last holiday launch but with the ps5 and series x launching holiday nintendo probably didn't want the holiday to be crowded and overshadow their console so holiday 2021 coming this year hardware sales will either remain flat or grow slightly due to revision bro flat for nintendo would be what playstation or xbox would long for flat sales for nintendo is like a million a month, 400,000 a month. It's like crazy numbers the Switch does. So it also says higher expectations are placed on the Switch Pro. That's what it's referred to in the article. And the PS4 Pro, which sold 2 million at launch window, than the PS4 Pro. So they're expecting the Switch Pro to sell more, uh, more than the PlayStation 4 Pro which sold at 2 million during its launch window. We're gonna get to those specs, which is crazy. It's the last point. The launch quarter will be September through December and could reach up to 12 million units in its quarter. This is what I'm talking about where they say uh, sales, flat sales for Nintendo, 12 million during its uh, launch quarter. Insane numbers. According to the hardware forecast, they speculate that the MSRP could be higher for the revision, upwards of 20%. That's been one of my questions. If the Switch Pro is going to be more powerful than the current Switch model, what are going to be these price points? We could be looking at a Switch Pro at $349 or even 399 for a pro type model, which I would take, bro, the PS5 all digital is 400. People gobble it up. People are gobbling up a $500 PS5. And so a 399 PS4 um, um, Switch Pro, I would get, and it would give me assurance that, okay, there are more specs 
in this for it to be a hundred dollars more meaning that there should be a bump in specs processing power etc check this out zelda is a strong launch game candidate with several round out titles to accompany it so it looks like zelda will be their main holiday title and several other titles to complement it i'm thinking bayonetta 3 i think prime 4 is gonna be next year bro but check this next and final tidbit the performance of this revision is expected to be in line with the playstation 4 pro and xbox one x that's huge i was almost reserved or satisfied even though i didn't want it to be on the level of the play base model playstation 4 bro if this is gonna be on the level of an xbox one x and if it has modern technology it's gonna be more powerful than the xbox series s in a portable form factor we will be getting finally next a next gen gaming experience from nintendo nintendo would not be a generation behind playstation and xbox which it has been for the last two generations the wii u a generation behind than the playstation 4 the wii a generation behind than the playstation 3 xbox 360 this would put nintendo back to having great third party games that's Two things that I really want Nintendo to do. Great third-party games and some kind of achievement, a system that, that records your gaming history. They do it every year. Every year, Nintendo does the yearly recap. And the same dude be like, oh, we don't care about achievements. Be all up on Twitter posting about their, uh, look at what games I've been playing, bro. And check out my most played game, what kind of gamer I am. That's what I want. That's what, pretty much what achievements do. They record your gaming history. So Nintendo has the technology to do it. They just need to implement it actually into the system. You know what I'm saying? And so this is huge, huge news. But we got some more breaking, breaking news. Bro. Here is... The blessing and the curse for Xbox Game Pass. And I said PlayStation 5 news. The breaking PlayStation 5 news will be in another video. But. Witcher 3. Arguably the game of last generation. Will be leaving Game Pass on March. Well it just left Game Pass. It left on March 15th. And that's what's been great about Game Pass and its detriment. On one hand, you're getting a whole bunch of games for only $15 a month. But this is a reminder that you don't own those games. As easily as those games are given to Game Pass, they can be taken away. And so Witcher 3 is an example. The game is, has been removed from xbox game pass so if you're trying to get game pass i you know what i haven't played witcher 3 let me get game pass nope it's gone and they've done that before big games grand theft auto five five yeah used to be on game pass and it's been removed i don't know i think red dead redemption is still on game pass but that's what's so um it's a double-edged sword you get that low cost but at the expense of Mess around and miss one month and try to sign back into Outriders. Gone. And here's my thing. A game like Outriders is going to be free at launch. A big AAA game. You're going to pay $15 a month. That's going to be a game where you're, you're going to be playing that for at least a year. You're going to be, because it's a looter shooter, they're going to always have content. You're going to always want to come back to it. $15 in March. $15 in april 15 dollars well april may june july just those four months you already paid 60 dollars then you're gonna want to keep playing it if you stop i'm um, paying can i still play outriders nope you're gonna have to pay in june july 
fifteen dollars, fifteen dollars, and so. The $60 that I say I would pay on my PlayStation 5 once and I just got the game, you're actually gonna be paying more if you wanna play Outriders over a longer period. Cheaper up front, but it's gonna cost you more in the long run. So Game Pass has its pluses and benefits. And again, of course you get more than just Outriders, but most of the games on Game Pass, you're not gonna touch. But that is the news item those are the news items for this video what do you guys think of the crazy switch pro information on par with the xbox series x xbox one x i wish a series x sound off in the comment section below i want to know but before you go bro click that subscribe button stay up to date all things gaming bro we out Thank you.